So I'm just going to say, when you get 17 million pissed off fucking veterans, when you get millions of the American people, the patriots, when you get the whites and the blacks, the yellow and the browns, or whatever our government wants to classify us under, when you get all those people standing together, you're fucked. We will not lay down. We will protect our children. And we're not going anywhere. You know, the puppies have a big bark, but the big dogs, they're in the shadows silently waiting. Shot one. Call Laimla. Yahweh Bahashim. Yahweh Shai. Bahashim. Rekon Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son. And our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles with great wisdom. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, There Shall Be Trouble in the Cities. So the Most High is bringing judgment, and we are in the year of turn up. And that was a phrase that was coined by Elder Apostle Tahar. So everything that the prophets have been talking about, we're going to see those things come to pass. The Bible says that the Lord's word does not return unto him void. So we're living in some very crucial times in these last days. Everything that has been foretold or prophesied, prophesy means to say before, we're seeing those things become fruition. Like the famine. Ten weeks of the wheat supply globally is projected to run out. About ten weeks of the global wheat supply remains. Fuel costs are projected to reach anywhere between 8 and $10 over the next three to six months. Food shortages. There's been over 30 food processing plants that have burned down. So we are entering into a point of no return. The moment in truth where our faith is going to be tested where that trial and temptation is going to come upon all the world. So the Most High is going to force us to put our money where our mouth is. And so we're going to be tested our faith and the strength of our integrity. Let's go here. So the world is rapidly changing. And we're reaching or moving towards a point of no return. <coughs> Let's go here. We're going to go to Second Nedris, chapter 15. Start at the top. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee, 
Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So everything we've told has been met with opposition. The so-called UFOs or the chariots of the Lord. They just had a congressional hearing about these chariots. We were mocked about that. Food shortages, famine. We were mocked about that. Race riots or civil wars. Division. Those things are in the works. More skirmishes with the government. We're seeing videos daily of people speaking out against tyranny. War with Russia, Armageddon. Those acts are in the works. The electronic tagging or tracking device that we spoke out about. These things are being set in place as we speak. So there is no such thing anymore as a so-called conspiracy theory for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So the Most High cannot do two things. He cannot fail, and he cannot lie. He's not going to make a fool out of himself by speaking something that does not come to pass. So the Lord's word is nothing to be played with. Second Edges 15, verse 4. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So there is a, there is a certain point or threshold in the Most High's mind that he's looking for, where judgment is going to go forth. There's a certain mark that the Most High moves and brings forth the smackdown. So in the military, we use a term called limit of advance. The limit of advance of an opposition force or a friendly force, a point that you cannot go beyond. And that's why we're seeing a large swarm of events, activities increasing. Remember in Second Edges chapter 9, the Lord talks about he will begin to visit the world in which he made. So we're seeing the presence of the Spirit of the Lord evident in the uproars of the people, famine, wars, and rumors of wars. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain 
continuously. Israelites, the Lord's people, but the Most High is particularly concerned about his elect. So everything is weighed in the balance. Everything is about measurement with the Most High. And right now, the scales of the wicked are found wanting, weighed in the balance. So the Most High is getting ready to tilt the scale in favor of the righteous. That means judgment must go forth. That's why he tell us in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, I create peace and make evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Why? Because he is the great balancer, the great judge, the lawgiver. So everything must be weighed in the balance. The unlearned calls it karma, but it's not karma. It's the most high bringing things back into a perfect, harmonial, universal balance. Let's go to verse 6. See, for wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So recompense must be paid out, which means payback, recompensate, recompense, or to pay back. That's why the Bible says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So the Most High is not going to make himself into a liar. And his word does not return unto him void. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So Egypt is talking about that place that is spiritual Sodom in Egypt. In Revelations 11 and 8, America or the daughter of Babylon. Let's go back to verse 9. And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So when you read Luke chapter 18, that widow that cries out to the unrighteous judge, eventually the judge avenges her. So the Most High is definitely going to avenge his elect of the house of Israel. Let's go to verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. So look at the back of your $1 bill an Egyptian obelisk or pyramid and the Egyptian eagle. So he's talking about that place, that spiritual 
Sodom, and Egypt. Look at all the plagues going on around the world. Food shortages, pandemics, dissension, division, hatred. See, wars being brewed up. So these are all spiritual decrees. Nothing takes place on earth before a spiritual decree goes forth. Nothing. Everything is predetermined in the spiritual realm first and then played out on earth. But that decree goes forth in the heavenly realm, the fourth dimension, the third heaven. Whether that be death, whether that be birth, whether that be wars, sickness, slavery. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. Spiritual decrees. So the consumption decreed before it goes forth, it was ordained of the Lord. Even that consuming plague of fire that's going to come upon the earth and judge the earth, starting with America. It's written on the heavenly tables. And our ancestors were able to read the stars. The prophets have a spiritual eye and are able to foresee. And in the ancient world, were called seers. So these are things that were prophesied or foretold. So the Israelites are going to be redeemed, delivered, and come out of great tribulation. Verse 13, they that till, let's go back to 12, Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hail and with a fearful constellation. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. And this reminds me of Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has a short time. So the Lord is moving the left hand through the spiritual demon, Satan, through the Edomites on the left hand. Their blessing is the sword. So a sword is being furbished, sharpened. See that? I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, plagues. So this is the left hand in motion. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. And there was a dream that I had, and I have told this dream 
a few times before. I fell asleep on a couch in the lobby, and there was a young major that came out of the Tactical Operations Center, or TOC. He said, sir, we need you in here. And I go into the room. The room is full of flashing flat screen TVs. And he shows me maps of the United States. And it was a battle zone map with different hotspots. And the Tactical Operations Center was in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And he was showing me on the map all of the different areas that they were planning to send in the military to smash or squash civil uprisings, militias, armed civilians. And the dream was very surreal. I mean, he literally said, hey, we need you in here, Colonel. Woke me up. And I passed out sleep on the couch in the lobby. So these were battle zones all in and throughout the United States. But the center that I was located in was Fort Sill, Oklahoma, in the dream. Showing me different hot spots around the U.S., that they were planning operational military objectives to go into and seize key cities. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. They're going to ignore political, military, and police authority, mayors, city councilmen, governors, National Guard, local police. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. So in that dream, military checkpoints were being established. Military patrols So many of these entry and exit ways are going to be manned by armed military personnel. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So this is Jacob's trouble. And after great tribulation is the deliverance of Israel and the restoration of the kingdom. The Mot B is going to be mandated. Federal troops are going to come in like a flood. All hell is going to break loose. So we're living in some very serious times. Not a time for hopscotch, games, mocking, scoffing. We're in the time to repent and make haste to turn to the Lord. The Bible says, believe his prophets and ye shall prosper. 
Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kwakadash, or Rakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.